Well, hi, welcome to part two of the uh, Speed Square, maybe, uh, versus the Craig Square Cut or something like that. I'm really not putting old school against new school or something like that. Like I said, the company makes a lot of really cool stuff, and I want to do their pocket joiner, as you can imagine, really badly, but uh, we'll be getting into that, I guess, sometime later this year. Right now, uh, this was a fairly inexpensive item, and I thought it would be really great, so I was really excited about getting it. And once I had this uh, in my hands and started like going over the uh, instructions and looking to see if the tool really had other applications, like they have uh, roofing angles here uh, marked on here. So it sort of is like a, a speed square and at the same time it's built a little different to give you some different features for cutting. And so what I want to look at now is some other technical issues with the tool may as well be warned I'm going to pop these black uh, rivets or whatever they are soon and get this piece of cardboard off of here so we can actually cut something. I've got some scrap lumber today here so I want to cut some scrap and use say maybe the two different systems and just see what the problems are that we're going to run into when we come back. Hi, welcome back. The first thing I did was just set up a be basically a piece of scrap and locked it down with some uh, clamps here so we could, you know, just cut on this. This is scrap lumber. Uh, it's actually some various pieces of scrap I had glued together at one time and the project sort of got canned. So we can cut this up any way we like. So I just wanted to make a line. And the first problem you're going to see with a small speed square like this is you can't even get all the way across the board. And so what you end up doing, a lot of times you end up bringing it over to this side, lining it up, and, you know, finishing your line or something like that. But not a big deal. This is still a pretty neat tool. But here's the next problem I ran into. I'm going to show you this right away. Uh, with this particular saw here, this is a small Ryobi uh, cordless, I can run like this, and I know roughly my blade is there. So once I get my blade lined up, with the uh, pencil line here, I can run up against this. Holding this in place, I can use it like the Craig tool. And the only problem I'm going to run into is this profile. And that has happened in the past a little bit where I've actually touched this and it sort of knocked the saw around. The other way would be this. Now, if you're going to cut this way and come across, and let's just set that up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The problem you have here is the, the saw is out in the air and you're kind of like this. You're all over the place on this particular cut. And the other thing I looked at was, notice where the blade is to where the motor is. Okay, so I'm holding it like that. Now, we're going to take a look at a Craftsman, and I'm going to show you what's going on. So we'll take this off, and so say we're going to use this, uh, this tool like this, and now, this is now my new guide. Now you can set this up with the screw, you loosen the screw off, you can set this up to tell you exactly where that blade is. So that's a nice feature, but notice the size of this, it's running into my clamps. So right away, I already have a, a little bit of a problem even trying to use the tool. It's too bulky, it's taking up space. Where I need clamps, I can't, so I actually would need a longer piece of timber to cut in order to be able to use this right now, at least for this particular cut. But there's another problem. And this is where I saw it. We'll bring back the little guy first. You see where this blade is? If I need to cut this way and keep my this side of the saw away from it, I've got a problem. This blade will run right into this plastic. Now this is, let's see if you can, oh, I'm gonna try to show you that really well. This plastic is backed off as far as it will go into the tool. So in other words, this is as far back as it'll go. There's a lock here, it stops, that's as far back. So I cannot use what I just showed you. I can't do it. In order to use this uh, item, uh, I don't know what I would do. Not with that saw, because obviously I can't come from this side, or unless I want to put my hands over and, and try to, you know, be on each side of it and run the saw through at the same time. So from what I can see, 
this particular, like the Ryobi, this little saw here, or probably the DeWalt's, or, or most of any of these, I'm, I'm seeing a problem with this piece of plastic actually being in the way. And you can't, because you can't back it any further, it means you really can't use this saw with this tool. Okay, not good. But I thought that was the first thing I would show you. The second problem is, of course, like I said, was the bulk of this tool won't go up against here. So let's get these black buttons out and uh, see if we can figure out how to remove them from the, the tool. I have no idea how to get those things out of there. But uh, when we come back, uh, we'll see if we can get this thing out of here. Okay, uh, presto, magic. Okay, I've taken the black buttons out. Uh, I've removed the packaging, so... What is that? Okay, aha! Uh -huh. Oh, look everyone, 10 black rubber feet. Now, what is that for? I guess that's to place the rubber feet on this piece here as padding. So, apparently, Ah, I guess we'll just actually really need to have this really clean before you put the padding on it even now. I've already got sawdust up in here. This thing has only been in my shop a little bit and already there's, it's collected a lot of sawdust just from the work that goes on around here. So let's get the, um, grab, a, grab a little rag or something here and just sort of wipe this off and let's get our rubber padding on here. So I had no, uh, didn't know about anything about that rubber padding. I feel so much better now that I have found, oh look, the 10 black rubber pads. <laughs> wow. All right. And I take it, you have to put these in here, just like that. They've got it uh, grooved out so you can just sort of punch the pads in. So that's kind of cool. You know, like I said, this is a good company. I do like some of the tools they make. Just had a few issues with these. Well, that is strange. That is actually sort of hard to, okay, there we go, we got another one. Man, there's 10 of them. And uh, so I guess this was a, one way to lower the cost of the tools, let the uh, do-it-yourself or do it himself. So we'll get the rubber pads uh, feet in place. Sure wish the instructions had mentioned remove packaging and find 10 rubber pads and then install or something along that line, but oh well. So. Okay, we've got the 10 rubber pads installed, which again, like I said, is still not going to help because unless my, uh, the inventory or whatever I'm doing, the lumber, unless it's longer, I run into these clamps. So let's take this clamp out of the way and down to just one clamp. And at least that way we'll have a little bit more space. Now we can probably get the saw through. And as I was showing you, you can set this to where your saw blade actually cuts and you can keep that and that becomes like a gauge and it's I do like it there are some cool things uh, like I said the way they show it is you, you this is like your handle for your for your hands to fit across this is wood glue uh, all over my fingers today I've been kind of busy other projects ah yes and uh, just enjoying it the hobby so now but again we still can't so you could probably do it this way, but I wouldn't recommend that would be a great way to do it, but I guess you could make your cut like that. Okay, let's get the big saw and let's have a look and see what we got. Okay, this is a full-size, large, heavy craftsman saw. And again, the problem I've got now is if I want to cut this way, uh, I would have to somehow reach over and hold this and I am totally, you know, I am feeling very awkward like this right now so absolutely not um, now if I do old school which would be you know doing it this way it's the same kind of you know jazz I would hold it and then come across with a saw the problem I've got is uh, too is and I don't know if it will make a difference but I'm le uh, if you're left-handed there's your left hand all the time your right hand is going to be on the saw and being that I'm left-handed I always like to handle my saws like this with my left hand sort of, you know, and get running across. So again, this sort of thing fails, but uh, yeah, that's a cross cut uh, helper, I guess. But it just, I think that uh, there should be a better design than this. It's a shame because I do think the idea is good. I just think the design I've got here and some of the features are just wrong. So, hey, thanks for watching Coffee and Tools. And hopefully, 
We'll get something going next week that's uh, a project. I think we're going to do planers next week. Uh, we're going to be looking at them, but we're going to have manual planers and electric planers. Pretty cool.